This is Audiobook Caboodle YouTube channel. Click on the subscribe button and listen unlimited audiobooks anytime, anywhere. The Art of Kissing Curiously, Historically, Humorously, Poetically Considered by Will Rossiter Chapter 1 Origin of Kissing The Scandinavian Tradition An Old Poet's Idea Kissing in Ancient Rome and Among the Jews and Early Christians Biblical Kissing Religious Significance Kissing in Early England Ancient Kissing Customs as Described by Erasmus The Puritanical Views of John Bunyan How Adam Kissed Eve A Kiss Defined By the Dictionary Shakespeare Robert Herrick Sidney Coleridge Comical and Short Descriptions A Grammar of Kissing The Scientific Reason Why Kisses Are Pleasant of kissing it has been quaintly said that nature was its author and it began with the first courtship the scandinavian tradition was that kissing was an exotic introduced into england by rowena the beautiful daughter of hengist the saxon at a banquet given by the british monarch in honor of his allies the princess after pressing the brimming beaker to her lips saluted the astonished and delighted vortigern with a little kiss after the manner of her own people for a long time it was an act of religion in ancient Rome, and among the Romans the sacredness of a kiss was inviolable. At length it was degraded into a current form of salutation. The kiss was, in process of time, used generally as a form of salutation in Rome, where men testified their regard and the warmth of their welcome for each other, chiefly by the number of their kisses. There was a curious law among the Romans made by Constantine, that if a man had kissed his betrothed, she gained thereby the half of his effects, should he die before the celebration of the marriage, and should the lady herself die, under the same circumstances, her heirs or nearest to kin would take the half due her, a kiss among the ancients being the sign of plighted faith. Among the Jews, kissing was a customary mode of salutation, as we may judge from the circumstances of Judas approaching his master with a kiss. The rabbis did not permit more than three kinds of kisses, the kiss of reverence, of reception, and dismissal. Kissing in many religions has played a part as a mark of adoration or veneration. In Hosea chapter 8 verse 2, speaking of idolatry, we find the sentence, Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Again, the discontented prophet is told that even in idolatrous Israel are seven thousand knees which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. The Mohammedans, on their pious pilgrimage to Mecca, kiss the sacred black stone and the four corners of the Kaaba. The Roman Catholic priest kisses the Asperculum, and Palm Sunday, the palm. In the words of St. Augustine, we find an account of four kinds of kissing. The first, the kiss of reconciliation, which was given between enemies wishing to become friends. The second, the kiss of peace, which Christians exchanged in church in the time of the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. The third, the kiss of love, which loving souls gave to one another and to those whom they showed hospitality. St. Peter and St. Paul used to finish their letters by saying, Salute one another with a holy kiss. In the early church kissing seemed to have been a common form of greeting, irrespective of age, sex, or social condition, and— in some, it seems to have created a jealous feeling. One heathen writer speaks of how annoying it must be to a heathen husband to see his wife exchanging kisses with the Christian brethren. Origen, one of the early Christian writers, says that the kisses must be holy. He may have had occasion to give this reminder, for mention is made by another writer of kisses so loud that they resounded through the churches and occasioned foul suspicions and evil reports. In the Bible there are eight kinds of kisses mentioned. Salutation. David fell on his face to the ground, and bowed himself three times, and they, David and Jonathan, kissed one another, and wept one with another, until David exceeded. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 41. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 26. Salute one another with a holy kiss. Romans chapter 16, verse 16. See also Exodus chapter 18 verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 20, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 14. Valediction. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband, Naomi to her daughter-in-law, 
then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept ruth chapter one verse nine reconciliation so joab came to the king and told him and when he had called for absalom he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king and the king kissed absalom second samuel chapter fourteen verse thirty three subjection kiss the son lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little psalm two verse twelve adoration all the knees which have not bowed unto baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him first kings chapter nineteen verse eighteen see also hosea chapter thirteen verse two and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment luke chapter seven verse thirty eight approbation every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer proverbs chapter twenty four verse twenty six treachery now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying whomsoever i shall kiss that same is he hold him fast and forthwith he came to jesus and said hail master and kissed him matthew chapter twenty six verses forty eight and forty nine the kisses of an enemy are deceitful proverbs chapter twenty seven verse six see also proverbs chapter seven verse thirteen affection when laban heard the tidings of jacob his sister's son he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house genesis chapter twenty nine verse thirteen moreover he joseph kissed all his brethren and wept upon them genesis chapter forty five verse fifteen and joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him genesis chapter fifty verse one see also genesis chapter thirty one verse fifty five chapter thirty three verse four chapter forty eight verse ten exodus chapter four verse twenty seven luke chapter fifteen verse twenty acts chapter twenty verse thirty seven among the poets we will select johannes secundus johannes everant to sing the origin of kisses when young ascanius by queen of love was wafted to cythera's lofty grove the slumbering boy upon a couch she laid a fragrant couch of new-blown violets made the blissful bower with shadowing roses crowned and balmy breathing airs diffused around soon as she watched through all her glowing soul imprisoned thoughts of lost adonis stole how oft as memory hallowed all his charms she longed to clasp the sleeper in her arms how oft she laid admiring every grace such was adonis such his lovely face but fearing lest this fond excess of joy might break the slumber of the beauteous boy on every rosebud that around him blowed a thousand nectared kisses she bestowed and straight each opening bud which late was white blushed a warm crimson to the astonished sight and the poet goes on to say that triptolemus gave a golden plenty to the land fair cytherea as she flew along o'er the vast lap of nature kisses flung pleased from on high she viewed the enchanted ground and from her lips thrice fell a magic sound he gave to mortals corn on every plain but she those sweets which mitigate my pain in england during the reign of edward the fourth kissing was very popular a guest was expected on his arrival and also on his departure to salute not only his hostess but all the ladies of the family so well did this novel importation thrive under the cloudy skies of england that from being an occasional luxury it soon became an everyday enjoyment and the english were celebrated far and near as a kissing people in fourteen ninety seven when erasmus was in england according to his description the practice was at its height he says if you go to any place you are received with a kiss by all if you depart on a journey you are dismissed with a kiss you return kisses are exchanged they have come to visit you a kiss the first thing they leave you you kiss them all around do they meet you anywhere kisses in abundance lastly wherever you move there is nothing but kisses and if you had but once tasted them how soft they are how fragrant on my honour you would not wish to reside here for ten years only but for life john bunyan the author of the pilgrim's progress 
Writing over a hundred years later, did not view the practice with enthusiasm. He wrote, The common salutation of women I abhor. It is odious to me in whomsoever I see it. When I have seen good men salute those women that they have visited, or that have visited them, I have made my objection against it. And when they have answered that it was but a piece of civility, I have told them that it was not a comely sight. Some, indeed, have urged the holy kiss, but then I have asked them why they make balks, why they did salute the most handsome and let the ill-favoured ones go. In an old book called The Lady's Dictionary, speaking of kissing in Scotland, the author says, But kissing and drinking are now both grown to a greater custom among us than in those days with the Romans. And to what extent kissing was carried on in Rome, Martial had stated in his epigrams, Every neighbor, he says, every hairy-faced farmer presses on you with a strongly scented kiss. Here the weaver assails you, they are the fuller and the cobbler, who has just been kissing leather. Here the owner of the filthy beard, and a one-eyed gentleman, they are one with bleared eyes, and fellows whose mouths are defiled with all manner of abominations. In England the custom of universal kissing seems to have gone out about the time of the Restoration, its abandonment in England might have formed part of that French code of politeness which Charles the Second introduced on his return. Returning to our first thought as to the origin of kissing, we may use the very safe phrase that its origin is involved in mystery, and agree with the poet that, when we dwell on the lips of the love we adore, not a pleasure in nature is missing. May that man lie in heaven, he deserves it, I'm sure, who was the first the inventor of kissing." How Adam kissed Eve has been described in Paradise Lost. He, in delight both of her beauty and submissive charms, smiled with superior love, as Jupiter on Juno smiles when he imprends the clouds that shed May flowers and presses her matron lip with kisses pure. Though we may be unfortunate in tracing back the origin of this pleasing custom, let us see if we have better luck in an attempt to answer the question, What is a kiss? First, we will go to the dictionary, where we learn that a kiss, a smack, or a bus, is a salute made by touching with the lips pressed closely together and suddenly parting them. Dr. Stormuth says that the word kiss seems to have had its origin in the practice of feudal times of expressing homage to a superior by kissing the hand, foot, or some part of the body, or, in his absence, some object belonging to him as a gate or a lock. One poet calls kisses the fragrant breath of summer flowers. This is a very happy conceit that is not always found to be true, for how fragrant kisses are depend very much on the breath of the principles engaged. Coleridge calls them nectar breathing. Shakespeare speaks of them as seals of love, and Sidney tells us they tie souls together. An old poet asks, What is a kiss? Alack, at worst, a single drop to quench a thirst, though oft it proves in happier hour the first sweet drop of one long shower. Robert Herrick, the old English divine, says of a kiss, It isn't creature born and bred between the lips all cherry red. It is an active flame that flies first to the babies of the eye, then to the cheek, the chin, the ear. It frisks and flies, now here, now there. Tis now far off, and then tis near, here and there and everywhere. Among short definitions we have that of the old Georgia farmer who caught a young couple kissing on a train that was passing through a tunnel and called the act dipping sugar. A kiss is like a rumor because it goes from mouth to mouth. Its shape is elliptical. As a grammatical part of speech it is a conjunction. Kisses are the interrogation points in the literature of love. Then again kissing has been called lip service and has been defined as the prologue to sin. More often, let us hope, it is simply a sweetmeat which satisfies the hunger of the heart. Marshall, the old satirist, has called the kisses of his favorite the fragrance of balsam extracted from aromatic trees, the ripe odor yielded by the teeming saffron, the perfume of fruits mellowing in their winter repository, the flowery meadows in the vernal season, amber warmed by the hand of a maiden, a garden that attracts the bees. Kisses have been called the balm of love, Cupid's seal, the lover's fee, the fee of parting, the first and last of joys, 
the homage of the life the hostage of promise love's chief sign love's language love's mintage love's print love's tribute love's rhetoric the nectar of venus the pledge of bliss and love the seal of bliss the melting sip and the stamp of love johanna secundus says to his sweetheart tis not a kiss you give my love tis richest nectar from above a fragrant shower of balmy dews which thy sweet lips alone diffuse tis every aromatic breeze that wafts from africa's spicy trees tis honey from the osier's hive which chemist bees with care derive from all the newly opened flowers that bloom in secrep's roseate bowers or from the breathing sweets that grow on famed hemitus's thymy brow kisses according to sam slick are like creation because they are made out of nothing and are very good another wag says they are like sermons they require two heads and an application an ingenious american grammarian thus conjugates the verb bus to kiss rebus to kiss again pluribus to kiss without regard to number syllabus to kiss the hand instead of the lips blunderbus to kiss the wrong person omnibus to kiss every person in the room erebus to kiss in the dark robert burns thus speaks of it honeyed seal of soft affections tenderest pledge of future bliss dearest tie of young connections love's first snowdrop virgin bliss but kissing baffles all attempts at analysis as josh billings says the more a man tries to analyze a kiss the more he can't the best way to define a kiss is to take one kisses are the commodities costing nothing never wearing out and always to be had in abundance after all why are kisses pleasant a scientist says that kissing is pleasant because the teeth jawbones and lips are full of nerves and when the lips meet an electric current is generated oh that a joy so soon should waste or so sweet a bliss as a kiss might not forever last so sugared so melting so soft so delicious the dew that lies on roses when the morn herself discloses is not so precious oh rather than i would it smother were i to taste such another it should be my wishing that i might die kissing the late george d prentice said he had a female correspondent who wrote when two hearts are surcharged with love's electricity a kiss is the burning contract the wild leaping flames of love's enthusiasm the humorist observed that the idea was very pretty but a flash of electricity is altogether too brief to give a correct idea of a truly delicious kiss we agree with byron that the strength of a kiss is generally measured by its length still there should be a limit and we really think that mrs browning strong-minded woman as she is transcends all reasonable limits in her notion of a kiss's duration in her aurora lee she talks of a kiss as long and silent as the ecstatic night that indeed must be linked sweetness altogether too long drawn out end of chapter one this was audiobook caboodle youtube channel presentation we hope you enjoyed listening. For full audiobook, check out our playlist section. Links in description below.